Hello, everyone. Welcome to our free intro class. This is so exciting. So right now we have um, approaching 100 people coming in, um, probably some more. We have over 200 people registered for this class. Um, this is really exciting and meaningful for us. I'm here together with my colleagues and we'll introduce ourselves in a moment. Something that we're doing here is completely new. We've all been teaching in our own ways. For those of you that are familiar with EA Zoom meetings, there have been a lot of free EA Zoom meeting classes as well over the past few years that our dear friend who recently passed, Linda Johnson, put together. There's the free evolutionary astrology message board that's been available for years um, that actually all of us have been studying and practicing and also sometimes teaching and for a long time. This is the first time that we're actually collaborating and coming together to teach together. And what we're doing in this class series and in this association that I'm about to introduce to you is coming together to build community, to share these beautiful teachings of evolutionary astrology in a way that's a lot more accessible um, and available to more souls. So I want to speak in a moment about what we're doing, how it came about, and just more about our intention and what this new association is. I just want to take a moment first to introduce my friends and colleagues that are with me, and we're all going to be speaking a bit about what we're doing and the upcoming class series. So um, I'm here with Kristen Fontana, Rose Marcus, Deva Green, and Rav Chahal. And something that Kristen pointed out is we're collectively um, including all of the Pluto generations from Pluto and Leo all the way to Pluto and Scorpio. Um, Rose has been a part of this work since the early 90s um, in the early Jeffrey Wolf Green schools. Kristen's been a part of this work also for a very long time. Deva has been a part of this work since she was born. She's a daughter of Jeff Green um, and has grown up deeply taking in this material. Um, I've been doing this since um, 2005 or so when I first got involved in this work. And Rav has been studying this for about a decade now and she has been recognized as a student that's just taken on this work very deeply. And she is the most recent graduate of the School of Evolutionary Astrology. So from Pluto and Leo, Pluto and Virgo, we have two Pluto and Libras, and then I'm Pluto and Scorpio. So there's something about this team also representing a very um, wide span of generations that are being represented. And we all have our own life and experience and our practice in this work. A part of what um, led us to create this series and what we've also created called the Association of Evolutionary Astrologers came when my partner Michelle and I, and, and I'll introduce my partner in a moment because she's been a really essential and instrumental part of this creation. We are chatting about Pluto. Um, and actually, Michelle came up with this idea to do some kind of Pluto series next year. Why? Well, Pluto enters Aquarius, and Pluto will be squaring the nodal axis of the moon all of next year, which makes 2023 kind of like the evolutionary astrology year, like Pluto squaring the nodes, Pluto entering Aquarius. Aquarius is astrology. It's a very Plutonian year. So she had this thought of some kind of Pluto series. And then I said, well, this should be an evolutionary astrology thing since evolutionary astrology is so focused on Pluto and the wisdom of evolutionary astrology really understands that Pluto represents the core evolutionary impulse that's at the core of each soul's incarnation. And we'll talk about that later in this class. So that led to, well, maybe I can collaborate with other evolutionary astrologers and so one thing led to the other. And we didn't think we were going to create an association, just the idea of teaching a class series. But it led to this idea of let's come together um, and actually create a platform for collaborating, for teaching evolutionary astrology that one, other evolutionary astrology teachers, old and even recent graduates can be a part of. 
that also allows these teachings to be accessible to all seekers, all students of astrology, not just those that are already studying EA or are already interested or are already deeply immersed in this work, even those that are new to this. There's something about the teachings of evolutionary astrology, and I would say, in general, the, the teachings of any, any spiritual tradition, there's often this simultaneousness. They're deep. There's a depth to them. Um, and they're also simple, meaning you can learn them over and over and over again. And the truths that they point to aren't very complex. Um, but the application and the wisdom and the insight and the realization of them seem to go deeper and deeper and deeper. So all of us share this, the shared appreciation and passion and recognition that the teachings that come through evolutionary astrology are deeply relevant and important and alive and meaningful in our own lives. So for all of us, teaching this work is also an ongoing part of our own deepening of integration, our own ongoing um, deepening of our own spiritual practice in life. And, you know, some of us are teaching courses already. Some of us are teaching and working with either clients or students in our own capacity. But there's something about the community coming together, right? Coming together as a team with a shared purpose. And it's not about my education style or Kristen or Rose or Dave or, or Rob's. It's about working together in service to the teachings and in service to all souls that we have the opportunity to share this with. And that is so wonderful. So the other thing that I want to say about this is the reason why we decided to create an association as opposed to just, you know, a year long class series, we recognize that astrology is super duper on the rise right now. It's just like really big. And I think with Pluto entering Aquarius, it's only going to get bigger. Many astrology teachings and teachers and platforms are being offered. And we realize it's appropriate. It's, it's almost respectable and honorable and right to do what we can to bring out the teachings of evolutionary astrology into the world professionally on par with how other organizations are also doing that. To really honor there is something really beautiful in this lineage and to do our part in making it available. So if you haven't already perused the website, check it out. It's incredibly beautiful. Michelle, my partner, has put it all together. So she stepped in. She's an astrologer in her own right, but she stepped in to totally support this work that we're doing. And is sort of the back end administrator, the website creator. Um, it's a beautiful site. And this will be the platform and the way through which we will build community and stay in touch, connect and share the teachings and share all the classes. So what we're going to do now is we're each going to have an opportunity to talk a little bit about this work, um, what we're doing here, um, what this association is going to be offering this upcoming class series. And we're going to start with Kristen, who is going to tell us a little bit about the history of evolutionary astrology, how this work came about. So um, thank you all again for joining us. And after we all share about um, evolutionary astrology and the, the upcoming series and also some of the transits that are happening, um, we're going to create some space for questions and answers. And you can ask us your questions about the series or questions about um, evolutionary astrology or just what we're doing here. Um, and then Michelle will also take us through the structure of the series as well. So I'm going to pass it on to Kristen, who will tell us about the rich history of evolutionary astrology, um, how Jeffrey Wolf Green first received this work. All right, July 1st, 1977, Jeffrey Wolf Green had a dream. And it wasn't just any kind of dream. It was a super conscious dream. Unlike Martin Luther King, who had a dream, he had a very big dream. <clears throat> And Jeffrey Wolf Green, Green also had a very powerful dream that he had no idea at the time <laughs> where it was going to lead. But he knew when he woke up that day that his life would never be the same. I'm going to come back to that point in time, July 1st, 1977, in a moment. But about a year prior to that, a little less than a year prior to then that, 
than that. He was living in Seattle and walking around the university district in Seattle, Washington. It was Sunday and a lot of stores were closed. And he walked up to a store called Astrology et al. Maggie Nalbandian was in the window on the other side, smiling at him, Laura Nalbandian's mother, and she waved him in. It was closed and she waved him on in. And he recognized her right away. He recognized her as his mother from his most recent past life as a Native American Indian. Their connection was immediate and he talked to her a little bit about who he was and he was very much into spiritual things in his 20s. It was post-Vietnam when he was fighting on the front lines and just this hippie <laughs> roaming the planet, spent a lot of time in New Mexico. And he was really learning a little bit about astrology on his own, in particular, Dane Rujar's work. But he was very much into meditation, very much into the SRF lineage, uh, Yogananda, Yukishwar, Babaji, etc. He was uh, very much into spiritual pursuits at that time. And immediately she said, why don't you come work here and just start doing charts? And I'll tell you what, you, you guys aren't going to believe this, but um, we all know, or most of us know, some of you might be pretty young here, but our, our Saturn return is intense, right? 28, 29 years old. We all remember what was going on in our Saturn return. I do. I was trying to get out of corporate America. <laughs> I mean, it was so different than I am today. I can't even believe it. It was so heavy, so intense. But I'll tell you what. On August 15th, 1976, when Jeffrey Wolf Green walked into that store, it was the day of his Saturn return to the minute. To the minute. You can't make up this stuff, right? You just, you know, when you're looking at charts and transits and you're just blown away by an aspect you see that's just reflecting the very nature of your life in the moment or on that day, so powerful. To the minute. And that door opened and everything led from there. So he was doing readings in there and, and nobody knew his name really yet. And he was doing some teaching and, uh, and then it was 10 and a half months later when he had this super conscious dream and he was working at astrology at all at the time and living in Seattle. In that dream, Yukastrar, Sri Yukastrar, part of the lineage from India, literally, uh, dropped into his soul and was showing to him this work. He started turning pages, page after page. Who knows how long this went on? But all Jeffrey remembered was just these pages turning and this material being dropped into him. He felt impregnated by the material. In fact, he talked about it later saying, you know, he doesn't even remember, you know, he never really learned this material. He would open his mouth when someone asked him a question and he would just talk. It would, talk, it would just come out of him. It was not coming from some left brain place. It was put into him. And so, you know, in a minute here, I'm going to show the chart of what was going on that day. But um, a few months later, he gave his very first lecture of this material, and it was called The Cause of Incarnation for the Soul. The very first lecture, The Cause of Incarnation for the Soul. We actually located, Dave and I located the original talk, but it's, it only goes through Pluto in the 10th house. We're trying to figure out how we can recover the rest of it if possible. And if that ever comes available, I just think it would just, just be fantastic and awesome. We'll keep trying to work on that. But he said it was never about the man. It was the material that brought the people. He would travel all over the world and it would be a packed house every time. He said, it wasn't my name. It was the material. Nobody knew me. It was the material. And it would be a full house. He would travel once a month to some other country and be packed house every time. It's the material. And so this is a timeless body of work. I mean, it's all, all over the world still. In fact, in 1992, or sorry, eight, 1982 is when he started writing the book, Pluto, The Evolutionary Journey of the Soul. And he said he hand wrote the book, handwriting. Computers weren't really big at that time, but he was handwriting it, trying to get it all out on paper. And a client of his said, what is it going to take for you to write the book? He said, well, I, I need to work. I, I need to, I have clients that are paying my bill, help me paying my bills and helping me survive. And the client said, how much money do you need 
to write the book? How much time do you need to finish the book? And he thought to himself, 60 days. I could probably write the book in 60 days. And so she gave him the amount of money that he would need to survive and to take care of himself, his family. And he wrote that book nonstop for 60 days and talked about his hand literally cramping, cramping, writing as much as he could till he couldn't write anymore. And this is Pluto, the evolutionary journey of the soul, the book you probably have in your possession. And it was 1984, <clears throat> it was 1984 when it was finally published by Llewellyn. And then the first three months, it went through three reprints. A thousand, you know, a thousand printed, a thousand printed, a thousand printed in the first three months. And today, 2022, all over the world, 12 languages working on a 13th in Hindi, which will bring this, uh, this may make me cry. <laughs> but, um, our friends in India, Nishka and Gita, thank you. Yes, so it's coming back to India where it started and that will be available hopefully in the next year. All right, um, I'd love to see the chart, Ari, so we can um, look at some of the trends okay. that we're going to So we're gonna try and make this simple for those of you who are new to astrology, but Ari, you said something. <laughs> you said um, that this work is, it's, it's really powerful, but it, it's simple. And the truth is simple, right? It's just not always easy. We know that for our evolution, when we get to the truth of anything, of what we need to be doing on our journey, we know the truth of it. It doesn't make it easy, but the truth is very simple. And the truth became very simple this night for Jeffrey as well. Transiting Pluto was conjunct his Neptune on his Saturn return, the day he walked into astrology at all. It was 11 degrees in, of Libra conjunct his Neptune in the 11th house. This was a, 10 and a half months prior. The day of the dream, transiting Pluto was also 11 degrees Libra. Through the retrograde, it had come back to that exact point as it was when he walked into astrology at all that day. And so here you see in the blue, the blue circle is transiting Pluto conjunct Neptune. Neptune is dreams, dreams. In, in the 11th house, the house of astrology. Neptune also rules Jeffrey's moon in Pisces in the fourth house. You can see this in the black circle. Eucostor's Neptune is exactly conjunct the moon, Jeffrey's moon. And this is how he talked about it, being impregnated with the work. It had literally dropped into his being. Transiting Jupiter, which rules obviously Jeffrey's sun sign, south node, Mars and Sagittarius. Jupiter is the planet of insight and truth. It's a planet of teachings. And it is conjunct Eucostor's Venus in Gemini and Jeffrey's Uranus in Gemini in the eighth house of the soul. That's in green, transiting Jupiter on that day. And also so beautiful in orange, we see the, uh, we see, excuse me, uh, Eucostor's south node in Scorpio uh, is conjunct Jeffrey's Jupiter and Scorpio in the 12th house. The 12th house is a Neptune ruled house. It's a natural Pisces house. And that, that is the house of dreams. And this material is timeless. It's boundless. It's seamless. It will be here long after we are all gone. So I just want to thank, uh, you know, the lineage. I want to thank, of course, Yukastrar and, and Jeffrey and uh, all the masters that have um, allowed this to be here so we can all evolve and grow in our own journeys. That's really what it's about for us to be able to move beyond where we've been, move beyond those blocks and help shine a light for others. That's why we are here. And I feel for a lot of you, that's why you are here. And lastly, um, I just like to show the book cover of what we're working on in, in Hindi. In and India. this is not the final book cover, but it will be similar to this. Um, and this is what it looks like. So the work is coming full circle, but it's not over. It's really just beginning in a new way right now. And I do feel that we all have uh, this team here for sure. And many, many others, we all feel a responsibility to uh, spread this work like dandelions in the wind. You know, the way Jeffrey really would have wanted 
for this to be and to happen. But he knows also that this work has a life of its own, as, as we can all see already many, many, many years after that dream. All right, would anybody like to add to that? Or um, otherwise I can transition into the YEVA and YEA is so unique and has made the impact that it has. Yeah. But I wanted to add to Kristen dovetailing off what you just beautifully shared is that um, in terms of uh, what, how he always presented himself and what he would also want from my point of view would want us to remember about him is that he saw himself as nothing other than the usher with the flashlight as the errand boy so that this could take on the life of its own and reach who it was meant to just as you're sharing so in terms of um, his personal orientation um, he saw himself just as that and could not have brought him more personal pleasure to be that. <laughs> so just wanted to share that before segueing into the, the why of EA. Um, so why is EA uh, so unique and why has it made the impact that it has? And uh, from my view, its strength is that EA really focuses on understanding the why. That prior to that, most of what we'd been experiencing or what we were used to in terms of astrology in general had been very descriptive rather than focusing on understanding the core reasons or causes of our past of our current circumstances and our intended future and there's a beautiful quote by Yukteswar that I feel really encapsulates the strength of EA he says a child is born on that day and that hour when the celestial rays are in mathematical harmony with his or her individual karma. The individual's horoscope is a challenging and revealing, or is a challenging re uh, revealing portrait of the unalterable past and probable future events. So it makes it unique because we have a tool in our graph so that we understand why we have been um, in certain places in our lives that have that we either desire to change or that we desire to understand what's our next step how did i get here and what can i do about it which is why so many of us gravitate towards the work and uh, from that understanding it can help us make better choices for our future by that understanding of why we're in the circumstances that we're in and why the past has been the way that it is, has been. And there's another beautiful story by Yogananda that I feel encapsulates this too, where three times, or he had three astrologers, I believe, come to him with his birth chart saying, you will be married three times. <laughs> this will happen. <laughs> it's unalterable. And Yogananda's response, he said, <laughs> Oh, this is just um, how we can harness the power of choice and how we can help ourselves overcome negative karma of the past. As he said, um, uh, past or seeds or past karma cannot be carried over if it is roasted in the seeds of divine wisdom. And he never married in that life. So it's where we interface with that moment of our past and then how we can make better choices to support the intended future. And um, it's important also, I feel, to share that when we use EA as a tool to orient it towards the standpoint of evolutionary astrology really being a prism or a way to see natural law from an astrological point of view. It's essentially a prism, it's essentially a language for natural law in terms of how we can come to understand our journey from a holistic point of view. And what I mean by that is that it's not based upon any specific belief, rather natural laws that we can all individually experience and are universally applicable. So it's grounded in what's naturally true rather than what so many of us have been taught or believe what uh, filtered by beliefs. I would, uh, from my understanding of the work and 
uh, um, looking at that and turn or harnessing it in as a tool to really develop and deepen our understanding of natural law. We can then see uh, the interfacement of past, present, future. And if we, if we stand right in the middle, it's almost like we're experiencing our past and our future simultaneously by standing very present in the moment. Natural law, past, present, future. We can then orient to the birth chart through evolutionary astrology as a roadmap to make uh, choices that will support us in our further uh, evolution and to free ourselves from habits or patterns or at times compulsions that no longer serve. So uh, YEA, it, it gives us the knowledge of why so that we can empower ourselves uh, to make choices that are supportive of our further growth and to deepen our understanding of natural law. Excellent. Thank you, uh, Deva. And uh, I'm going to uh, talk briefly on the philosophy of the soul. So uh, what is soul? Soul is an immutable consciousness. It can never die. It simply changes form. And how the soul grows um, is through its desire nature. Desire is the determinant of evolution. The moment that the soul has a desire, it's what um, I refer to as creation in motion. The soul seeks to realize that desire in order to become more than it is already. Now, the uh, nature of desire uh, for the soul is dual. Uh, it is a frictional element between the um, attraction to that which one desires and, uh, and the resistant impulse. And it is friction that, um, that uh, generates the momentum that uh, supports evolution, promotes evolution. Uh, and so um, soul, uh, we correspond to uh, Pluto, uh, the eighth house and the Scorpio archetype. Scorpio archetype is regenerative and uh, therefore uh, the soul, the reincarnation process of uh, death and rebirth from uh, lifetime to lifetime. And uh, the soul um, is a creation of source, of universal source of the divine, of universal consciousness, God, goddess, uh, however you want to terminate that. Um, uh, source corresponds to the 12th house, the Pisces archetype, and Neptune. So um, the Neptune archetype, Pisces, this is the union of all diversity. Um, it is infinite. It is the ocean. And the soul, the uh, source um, spirit uh, will um, create an individualized soul by which it can uh, observe and reflect upon its desires. This is like putting the lens in the camera, an individualized, uh, uh, individualized soul. And soul, um, also um, soul and Scorpio and Pluto and so forth. This is the deepest desires of the soul for its own evolution. Wherever your Pluto sits, uh, it will show your soul path, your deepest unconscious desires for your evolution, and your deepest unconscious security patterns, which are rooted in the past as well too, right? And the soul <clears throat> from lifetime to lifetime uh, will create a self-image or an ego self by which to observe and reflect uh, upon its desires, to embody its desires. And that ego self, that self-image, corresponds to the cancer archetype, the fourth house, and the moon. And so between the water triad, uh, we have the water trinity, the twelfth house, the Neptune archetype, the Pisces archetype. This is a mutable yin archetype, ever-changing, ever-evolving, ever-expanding. Scorpio archetype, Pluto, eighth house, it is fixed yin. Uh, the soul has some resistance to its evolution, yet it is also attracted 
to the mystery behind that evolution. And the fourth house in Cancer archetype is Cardinal Yin, Cardinal's activation. The, uh, the Cancer archetype, all three um, correspond to the past. The Cancer archetype is the container for the water and the essence of the water, right? And uh, the three uh, work, um, work together. So we see within that, uh, that. Um, and so the ego serves as that focusing lens and over the experiential um, uh, experiences that one, uh, one has, that, uh, that filter, the, the lens and the camera, after a while it gets clouded or, you know, uh, it, uh, it, it uh, becomes uh, dimmed. And uh, the process of evolution is that of clearing up the lens so that we can see the light again. So the process of evolution is to uh, move through all separating desires until there is but one the desire to return to uh, to source or the light of all that is. This is uh, what Jeffrey termed the separate wave back to the ocean. And it is to move the center of gravity from a uh, center of consciousness being rooted in the ego self, uh, move that back to the soul and move that back to source. Um, uh, all of this is uh, very familiar to those who have Pluto One, and it is the foundation by which we uh, begin our process of looking at the chart. It's part of the reason in the methodology that Jeffrey chose, uh, uh, designed for us, that we start with Pluto and um, move to examination of the nodal axis. The uh, nodes that are in the chart are the lunar nodes, and they correspond to the um, evolving ego self. Thank you, Rose. That was beautifully put, actually. And um, just to give you some information about the association and the classes itself, and um, it's like what Ari said at the beginning, um, it's a Plutonian year. We're entering a Plutonian year next year. It, there's... Um, transits that are going to affect us all individually and collectively pluto into aquarius um it hasn't been since 248 years um every time pluto's entered aquarius there's been revolutions rebellions just you know upheavals and um and i doubt this is going to be anything different and it's just to kind of equip us all with the knowledge and tools to be able to kind of navigate forward and this is one of the reasons why um, this association has come into being. And we just wanted to also create a community. And that is the essential quality of um, Aquarius, you know, building a community of like-minded individuals who are on the same same path and, and where the desire is to, to um, transmute, you know, forwards. You know, we're fully aware of our soul journeys, um, you know, the desires of trying to unite with God, source, energy, whatever you want to call it, or we resist it ultimately. And with the pivotal year coming ahead, we've planned certain classes, which we feel will be of use in terms of knowledge to move forwards. You know, evolution is but a choice. You know, we either cooperate or we um, resist. You know, and we want to be, have the right choices to be able to move on the the right path, if I can if I can use that word. And so the classes that there are listed on the website, so please do have a look at that because you'll get a lot more detailed information in terms of the the eight classes that we have coming in the next few months. Um, then we have a ninth final class of the year in June next year, which will be a volunteer class where we will kind of collaborate all the material. And all the teachers will actually work on a chart together to give you, um, to show you how it all works and, and how it all interconnects. In terms of the classes, just to give you a quick little synopsis here, we're going to start with Mars retrograde in Gemini. Then it moves on to the Pluto paradigm. Um, then we'll be looking at the evolutionary astrology stages and um, where both um, Deva and Ari will work with one chart. Um, just describing how the um, evolution happens in a consensus state, individual state, in a spiritual state. 
Um, and then the new year starts with the matriarchy versus the patriarchy, the evolution of the soul journey on earth, which I personally, well, is one of my talks, but which I personally love because I feel understanding where the matriarchy started and it transitioned into the patriarchal um, experience is vital to understanding the soul journey deeply. Then we'll have Pluto in Aquarius, um, moving on to Saturn in Pisces, Pluto square the nodes. We've got Pluto on the nodes and Pluto retrograde. And then finally, the live reading class at the end of uh, the year in June. So yes, please do have a look at all that information, which is there. It's um, quite detailed. But if you have any questions or any queries, feel free to hit message any one of us through the school's website. And yeah, we're, we're here to help you. We're here to evolve together. And like I said, it's building that community of like-minded individuals and and just moving forwards. And and the way Deva mentioned this work, we're all we're all kind of errant. I'm going to use errant boys, but you know what I mean. <laughs> we're trying to take this material forwards. I'm very passionate about it, as you can probably tell. Um, I'm honored to be amongst these wonderful teachers, and hopefully, they will set the path forward for others to join. And, and to join us in this um, in this association, so yeah. And I want to say too, just giving a, a sense of really the times that we're living in. Um, Pluto doesn't often change signs, and to be moving into Aquarius, we're combining the archetype of evolution, transmutation, Pluto, with the archetype of liberation, revolution, transformation, Aquarius. And this is happening while also Pluto is squaring the nodal axis of the moon. It, it really does mean that the, 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 the deeper Pluto work is deeply up for us now and coming into this next year. This is what Jeffrey Wolf Green described as an evolutionary transition, right? There are times in our life personally and collectively where it's an evolutionary transition. We're facing some of the core content and that could mean very empowering new uh, awakenings or challenges and facing content that we don't quite know how to work through it. So in a sense, armoring ourselves and deepening our, our, our mind in these teachings, sharing it, teaching it, studying it is one way of supporting um, ourselves on this soul journey. Let's pass it on to Michelle, who will actually talk more about the, the course, the practicals and anything else that in your skillfulness, you know, to speak about. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm Delighted to be here and see so many beautiful faces on this call today and joining this incredible team. Um, I had no idea when I brought forward <laughs> this idea that it would become this way, but it comes out of a deep core commitment in my heart to um, really understand evolution and to be face to face with the work of Pluto and to be able to do this with this incredible team. I get to be the mama behind the scenes uh, of the website, of the community, and really supporting these teachings to come forward. So if you've looked at the website, um, and maybe Ari, you can share the screen, um, it is designed you know, to be a space for us to come together. These classes have been so beautifully um, brought forward by this team of teachers. And when you register and join, become a part of the association, you pay $99. That includes everything, access to all of the live classes. It includes a private community group, which is our own um, on the website, our own like Facebook group, a place where you can socialize, connect with the group, connect with people. When you're in these live classes, you'll have access to be able to ask questions and participate in the teachings. And then if you can't attend live, you'll also be able to have lifetime access to the recordings. So it's essentially $11 a class, which is such a reasonable way to really, one, come together in, some, in the birth of something that is um, dedicating itself to this evolutionary journey, to be able to be steeped in these teachings and connect um, with a group of people who are really wanting to study and understand evolutionary astrology from this lineage, and to have um, access to also a resource library. So on the website, 
there is a link to the resource library and that's where you'll find um, the School of Evolutionary Astrology. So as a team, we've decided to actually contribute back to this original school, um, this place where these lineages are connected and founded from. And so there is a forum on the school and you'll be able to interact with and also learn more through the forum. This is um, a place where we're going to add and build resources, videos, and um, really help bring these teachings forward in a new way, as Kristen said so beautifully. So not to be confused, the $99 covers everything the whole year. Um, but if for some reason you're just like, oh, I want to just attend that one class, I'm super interested in Pluto and Aquarius, and I just want to drop into that class, on the website, there is a classes page where you can purchase any class in the entire series as simply a drop-in. You don't have to become a member. You don't have to join the association. You can just buy that one class. And that's $33 just to drop in. You'll receive a link to the Zoom for that class. You'll be able to participate in that one live class and you'll receive the recording afterwards. So if you're more of an a la carte person, you feel like there's no need for community or for the full scope, but you feel deeply called to just attend one class, feel free to also do that. Um, if for some reason you drop into one class and you love it, you absolutely love it, you wanna become a member, um, please feel free to reach out to me. I would be happy to upgrade you to a full membership. I'm really the back-end administration of this entire website. So when you email jwgassociationea at gmail.com, you can ask any questions, receive technical support there. Um, if you have any trouble accessing the classes after you've become a member or accessing the members only page, I'll be the one um, really supporting you. And I'm also, I feel like the community mama. So I'm really here to support the evolution of astrologers and students being together with one another and learning from one another. And that's one of the beautiful things that inspires me about this space and being able to be with all these teachers. So I encourage you to check it out. If you feel called to join, please do join us. Um, we'd be delighted to have you with us for this year. And we're really doing this in, in a way, it's the beginning of something we all don't know in the same way that this Pluto transit is the beginning of something that is bringing about a new form of community and humanity. Um, so this may be something that continues year after year with other astrologers in this lineage and with this team really carrying forward. Um, I hold that there is a long-term vision that just is about to unfold, and we are all in the witnessing of that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle, and thank you for all the time and love that you've put into this. Um, I see that questions are coming in, so we're going to start taking these questions, and we can also go, you can also raise your hand, and we can unmute you. I want to um, clarify a couple of pieces this work is also an opportunity for us to give back to the school um, where we've all studied and trained for many years. So 10% of proceeds from all enrollment is actually being given back to the School of Evolutionary Astrology. And a part of the school, I mentioned earlier, there's a forum. Um, I began studying on the forum in 2008. It's been like one of my most for a long time, it was just like the place I spent most of my life. Um, this forum is available now. It's available for anyone that has questions on evolutionary astrology, not just those that are, are enrolled in the correspondence course, in the DVD course, there is, or whatever we call it today. Um, it's available for anyone. And, and a part of this series, you can always get on that free forum, uh, schoolofevolutionaryastrology.com, and ask any questions or engage further with the content that's being taught in any of the classes. And we can get on that forum and, and address it with you. So this is a free forum and it's available. You can use it. We can all come together and kind of join in this space. Um, and we can continue to support you there throughout the year as well. 
So um, let's 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 field some questions. If any of my colleagues want to start taking some questions, what else does membership in the association mean apart from learning? I.e., can one list this as a professional affiliation? There's no certification, of course. Anything that you're studying, you can always write that down or put it on your website or tell someone. Um, we are all incredibly credible and practice astrologers in our own right. And a part of what we're doing in creating the series and this organization is actually creating a very professional, solid and credible um, platform of education and learning. So there's something valuable that we're offering and we're showing up for this in a, with a lot of integrity to represent the teachings in a very clear, um, pedagogically clear and accessible way. So it's beneficial for your studies if you want actual professional uh, accreditation, then you would you know, want to go to the School of Evolutionary Astrology Certification or one of the other evolutionary astrologers who is offering courses or trainings. The question regarding how does Jeffrey uh, Green of Evolutionary Astrology differ from other types of astrology? Um, it's the basic answer I can give to that is it answers the question why. You know, why is these patterns happening in your, your life, for example? You know, it goes deeper into the why, not the um, how and just the descriptive um, elements of astrology that's, that I feel is quite common. So it goes into the deeper roots, into the deeper um, soul journey of, of the individual, um, you know, looking, being able to look into the past, to the present, into the probable future. So it's that um, trinity that Rose was talking about. Um, so it's um, if you haven't read Pluto at the evolution journey of the soul, please, please pick that book up. You know, that's that's one book that literally changed my life. And it just everything just makes sense. But please also go on to the school's uh, message board um, and just, you know, have a look at some conversations and just just looking into Jeffrey's work, his books. There's, there's a lot of books out by all these um, teachers here. Um, that, you know, the resource page will give you that information, just looking at, just doing your own research. And you'll know if this work is for you, even not even wanting to become a professional astrologer, but just wanting it to know for your own soul development, it will just ring true. So it's just following your gut instinct. And if you're here, I kind of feel that um, there's a little bit of a, of a nudge to kind of explore it even further. Uh, and uh, Jeffrey's work greatly expanded the understanding of the archetypes. And one of the beauty of the um, uh, of the work, the body of work, is a specific methodology of getting into the chart. Uh, and so um, that specific methodology will help you to extract the depth of the chart uh, in a way that I haven't seen in other, um, you know, other uh, lines of study. And there's a question, is this only for astrologers? Um, not necessarily. Offhand, I would say maybe three, maybe four of the classes probably are just um, really useful um, in terms of spiritual knowledge, understanding and insight. Mm -hmm. They're all going to include some astrology and those classes that are a little more astrologically involved such as Pluto square in the nodes, there might be concepts or techniques that are referred to or practice that you may not be familiar with, but, and we have many resources that were very readily available to direct you towards to further study and practices. So our intentions here is to offer depth and to make it accessible for all levels. I mean, this is not a training program. You don't need to be a practicing astrologer or, you know, knowledgeable of this work. Um, and of course, we are going to be using basic astrological language, but we're here to support your studies and your learning. So hopefully everything's accessible and we can direct you towards whatever will support the areas that, you know, want to be further clarified. Hey, Ari. Oh. Yes. Sorry, uh, let me just... Go ahead, Kristen. I just wanted to add too that I, I'm wondering what the percentage is, Dave, maybe you know, but there's so many people that get a hold of this course that have no intention of ever becoming an astrologer, right? They just maybe. want the material for their own growth, their own understanding. I have so many clients that are involved in other professions, but they love astrology in terms of looking at their life and understanding their relationships. So, I mean, this, the body of work, you know, evolutionary astrology, evolutionary astrology brought to this planet by Jeffrey Wolf Green. 
um, literally is life changing if you get a hold of it. Um, and so I would say, a lo what, David, what do you think? What percentage of the people that buy the course actually become astrologers or all are astrologers? Let's say two out of 10. Two out of 10 were an And that's just fine yeah. because what I get back or it's exactly what you're saying, that the intention wasn't to become certified or professional, but they really wanted to understand the work in a way to its deepest possible extent is what they were saying. And that because of how it enriched their lives, how it helped them uh, understand their own s uh, spiritual, emotional growth and others around them. So it gave them not just astrology, but it gave them a prism or a way to understand and to uh, help uh, promote uh, an essential uh, gr growth that they were feeling at the time when they got the course. Yeah. So it was like the perfect tool for them to use for what they were wanting to, to give birth to or what they were wanting to, to, uh, to nurture in themselves. Uh, will this run next September? Until next September. It's basically this, this is open for a year. And then yeah, everything is, av all of the content will be available indefinitely. So you can, you know, it's, you're going to have ac lifetime access to it. And perhaps next year, a new series will begin as well. I think that answers your question. How long is each class approximately? Um, I, I don't know if we've determined that yet. Uh, to, correct me if I'm wrong. So no, I'm going to say seen. my sense of it um, would probably be, oh, no, we have an hour and then 30 minutes for Q&A &A panel question. discussion. So what's really cool about this, you know, each class is co-taught. So we're each teaming up to partner up and lead, which is cool. Like I've never taught with Dave. I've never taught with Rose before. And I've taught a thousand years for with Kristen, um, but I haven't <laughs> done this with, with the rest of you. So we're, we're joining into partnerships, which is, which is really fun. Um, exciting but we're all going to be there every single one of us will be present for each class and so after the teaching we're all going to have the opportunity to chime in um, offer our reflections and insights and also have a designated time for questions so i recall our sense of it is an hour class and in 30 minutes maybe a little more we'll we'll we'll, we'll have a meeting and we'll talk about it but that's my sense of it right now Oh, Jacqueline, you're asking about affiliation. I'm not sure what you mean by affiliation, but yes, this means you're affiliated with the school of EA. I mean, I just think it's important to, to know that you're just joining um, a community of people that want to grow and evolve. And that's yeah. all, that's really what it, our intentions are um, to come together and to grow individually and as a group and to support each other during this time. Cause it's going to, it's going to be big. It's already big. So to, to make us all feel kind of more connected. Um, can we look at our own Pluto charts? That's a good question. So in class, there will be opportunity for questions. Um, there is some space to bring forth um, even our own charts that relate to the particular content that we're sharing. There is going to be a single class devoted to an actual chart interpretation. Um, we're just choosing one volunteer. Um, out of the entire group. So there's a small percentage that you'll get that, but you could ask questions that relate to your own chart signatures that's relevant to the content in class for sure. Let's see. Any I mean, we've had Anna B ask a question regarding um, some kind of mentoring about chart readings. Um, I believe in terms of that question, the, um, the, tr the class we have in June next year is going to be a volunteer class where we will be working on a volunteer chart where that's where you'll kind of see how it all works together um, in terms of reading uh, for a person. Um, so that might help in terms of the mentoring side of it. But yeah, in terms of specifically having mentoring, that's not something we've really looked at yet, but that would be the class to look out for. Also to add to that, um, the message board can also be a wonderful place mm -hmm. to reach out to ask questions. It's not for personal interpretation, but if you're studying the material or if you feel stuck, to reach out with questions on the message board and to be supported by those who have graduated the course. Yeah, that's a great and very available and open place for asking questions. Um, this sort of elicits the thought, oh, how and what other ways can this association expand and offer more avenues of availability? Yeah. Right now, it's just this series and, um, you know, in our, there's a quality in our classes too, where you're going to learn, like one of the classes that I'm doing with Deva, 
we're going to be looking at evolutionary stages and applying uh, different evolutionary stages to one chart. So there's a lot of hands-on practice and application of the material as well. Okay. Thank you all so much for joining us. You're going to receive uh, this video will be available for everyone. So please get in touch with Michelle. Michelle will put the email in the comments. Check out the website. We invite you all to enroll and ask any questions that you need to. And we're getting started next month um, in literally just one month from now with our first class on Pluto and Mars retrograde. Mars is going retrograde in Gemini and in conjunct to a Pluto. So we got Mars retrograde, we got in conjunct, we got Pluto also retrograde, several different dimensions going on at once. This will be a great opportunity to learn all about it and see what's going on. So yeah, so much love to you all. Thank you for joining us and hope to see you all soon.